Exodus 17, verse 12, it's right there on your screen. Moses' arm soon became, I'm a suit can catch this, so tired. He could no longer hold them up. Moses' arms became so tired. I, I want to pause for a minute. Look at somebody close to you. Look at somebody in your house and say, please help me handle this pressure. You may be seated. I, I want to talk today from a very simple topic. Help me handle the pressure. Help me handle the pressure. For the last few weeks, we've been dealing with this idea and the reality of pressure. For the last few weeks, we've been dealing with this idea and the reality of pressure. And I've come to the conclusion that in my life, and I pray you can receive this, pressure enters my life two ways. We've been dealing with the idea and the reality of pressure. And in my life, I've come to the conclusion that pressure enters my life two ways. How is that, Pastor Mike? And I want you to take really good notes today. Pressure enters my life two ways. Either God placed something on me or I pick something up. That's rich. Either God placed something on me or I pick something up. I want to submit to you that whenever God places something on you, he equips you. Whenever you pick something up, he graces you. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a preach to myself today. Whenever God places something on you, he equips you. I believe right now that pressure enters our lives, me personally, two ways. Nessa, he, he enters my life when God places a mantle or an assignment in my life that I feel is too great for me. But he says, Michael, it's cool because I called you to that. I equipped you to it. But then there are certain things that God has not called me to. I walk to. I don't think you caught that. There are certain things in my life that I'm not sure if God told me to do. It was a personal ambition of mine. And because I picked that up, he has to grace me through it. And I want to submit to you that many of us right now have to position ourselves to where we can hear God. Because I would like to submit to you that the pressure you have, once you define and determine where it comes from, will equip you for how to handle it. In today's text, to give you some context so you can respect the content, the children of Israel find themselves in a crisis, or should I say another crisis. God just made water come from a rock, but before they can celebrate that, another problem shows up. And I'm going to say this, and three of you can receive this. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Can I preach to somebody in here who you be tripping like, God, give your boy a break. I, I said this a couple weeks ago and I'm going to say it again. I wish life sent out a text message for problems. I wish that life would just send out a message to my debt collector, send out a message to family members, send out a message to my enemies, my haters, and my foes to just say, hey, don't bother him today. Today's been kind of rough. I wish, I wish life made an allowance for my problems, but that's not how life works. God makes water come from a rock, and before they can celebrate that, they run into another problem. Now, the last problem proved God's, please put this in your notes if you're watching, provision. The last problem was about God's provision. Let's define provision. The definition of provision is the action of providing or supplying something for use. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little biblical. The biblical definition of provision is the act of providing or making previous preparations. That can preach. The act of providing or making previous preparations. I'm going to say this and only three people are going to get excited when I say this, Elder Tristan. What's provision? It's when God gets ahead of you. Put something in your path that you don't even know you're going to need until you need it. I don't think you heard what I just said right there. Somebody say provision. Provision is God putting somebody on a job who you don't even know who's going to like you at the time you're up for a promotion because he's setting stuff up. God likes setting situations up. So what does he do? God calls them out of bondage. He knows that they will be thirsty. He knows that they will be hungry. And God says, I've situated and acculturated water in a rock. I've made previous preparations. I want to submit to somebody watching me this morning who's stressing about the pressure of how you're going to provide. I would like to submit to you that if you would be patient, you might see God's provision. But I've discovered a lot of times, a lot of times we cannot embrace God's provisions because we're stuck on our preferences. 
I'm in the wrong church today. I'm in the wrong church. I believe you're not going to have church with me today because you got your new red hair on. So you're going to sit here and be cute on TV, church. But six of y'all know what I'm talking about. A lot of us can't embrace God's provisions because we're stuck on our preferences. Make that make sense. God said, I will bless you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men. The problem is God will send a person into your life whose provision, who sit ahead of him to provide for you, but they don't look like what you thought they would look like. So you bypass the provision running to your preference. Every blessing won't show up looking like what you thought it may look like. This is why grandmama said, can we have old school church? Anyway, you bless me, Lord. Can I pause and just preach to six people watching me today who can submit? Pastor, I don't care where it come from, long as it show up. I need God to do in my life exceeding and abundant above all I could ask or think. Provision is the act of providing or making previous preparations. What's the problem, PMJ? When he makes water come out of a rock, we see his provision. But the current problem that Moses finds himself in, the children of Israel, Israel find themselves in, this problem is solved, you're going to like this, Tristan, through prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. This is good. I feel God in here today. This is good. Most times, I'm going to say this slow. I want you to put this in the comments or I want you to write it. Most times when God provides, it requires participation. That's rich. Most times when God provides, it requires participation from you. That's good. He says, no, 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 Mike, I, I, I have provision, but sometimes your provision requires participation. Make, make that make sense. God placed water in a rock, but Moses had to strike it. God parted the Red Sea, but Moses had to stretch out his rod. God made manna fall from the sky, but Moses had to speak it. I don't think you heard what I just said. God says, God says Moses, if you're thirsty, he'll go to water, but participate. Moses, if you want to walk across Red Sea, I, I can part it, but you're going to have to participate. That's rich. If you're hungry, I can make food fall from the sky, but you're going to have to participate. And I would like to submit to you that many of you find yourselves with three options right now and your inability to discern which one is holding you back. God is telling you right now, either strike it, stretch it, or speak to it. Michael, either strike it, stretch it, or speak to it. And the inability to handle pressure inhibits your ability to discern what to do in crisis. That's rich. The inability to handle pressure inhibits your ability to discern what to do in crisis. Somebody say strike it. If you need water out that rock, he tells Moses, all you got to do is hit that thing. He says, all right, if you want to walk across on dry ground, all you got to do is stretch it out, all right? Number three, if you want food, this is so good right here, all you got to do is speak to it. If you want water, strike it. If you want to walk, all I need you to do is stretch. If you want food, I need you to speak it. And many of you, your inability to discern what God wants you to do is holding you back. Why, PMJ? Because whenever you strike in a season, and God says speaks it cost you your destiny I'm in the wrong church and many of you are frustrated right now like God why aren't you coming through for me and God says no 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 because what do we see Moses speaks to take God God says Moses strike the rock he strikes the rock water comes out the rock in the next season God says speak to the rock what does Moses do strike the rock I want to pause because what does pressure do pressure makes you rely on your last activity. I don't think you caught what I just said. Pressure will make you run back to what worked last time. I'm in the wrong church today. Pressure, many of you right now are dating somebody who you don't want to be with, but pressure made you go back to what's comfortable. Ooh, they just logged on. Pressure will reveal who you trust and who you lean in on. No, 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 no. And I want to submit to you that what God is trying to do right now is grow you up. Why is he trying to grow you up? Because he don't want you striking stuff he said speak to. He don't want you speaking stuff he said stretch out on. He don't want you stretching out on stuff he told you to strike. <laughs> Michael, and I want to submit to you, your inability to handle pressure inhibits your ability to discern what to do when in crisis. A lot of you lashing out at people, striking. You should have just prayed for <laughs> A lot of you are upset because you keep saying, and here's what's crazy. Somebody say pressure. 
Here's what's crazy, because Moses strikes the rock the second time and water still comes out. So the striking works. It just costs you something in the future. Many of you, you want to know the worst thing that God is, one of the best things that God is showing me in this current season, that just because your strategy worked and because it yields results don't mean it's taking you where I'm taking you. I don't think you caught what I just said, Tristan, because the greatest enemy to your next victory is your last victory. Y'all, I'm having church by myself today. Do me a favor. Just look at somebody in this room and just say, stretch out on God. Just See, see, I need to look at somebody and say, strike when he say strike. Look at somebody else and say, speak when he say speak. I want to pause and parenthetically digress because there are three categories of people watching me today and we're going to have church all by ourselves. I came to speak to every person who you are in a season of speaking. I want to take 60 seconds and just speak some stuff that is not as though it is. I declare I declare that God is restoring your family. I declare that he's giving you more strength. I declare that he's giving you more wisdom. He's giving you more peace. He's giving you more power. You can't be afraid to speak. This, this is critical. In, in our text, we see four great men. It's good. Four great men uh, who distinctively in the midst of their season is being attacked. We see four great men distinctively in the midst of being attacked. Attack, attack. Who are these four great men? Take note. Moses, Aaron, Joshua, her. Okay? Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and a mysterious brother by the name of her. We all know Moses. We don't have to read his resume, do we? Moses is a cold-blooded brother. He's the great lawgiver. He's the deliverer of Israel. Moses was the greatest leader uh, that Israel probably has ever seen. He led the Israelites out of the Egyptian bondage through the wilderness wanderings. Moses is a cold boy. We all know Aaron. He's not only Moses' brother, but he's the high priest of Israel. We all know Joshua. Joshua is a battler. He's a fighter. He's our favorite hero. So the question now becomes, who is her? And according to Hitchcock's dictionary of the Bible names, the name her means liberty, whiteness, whole, liberty. So evidently the spirit of the Lord was with him. That's critical. Liberty, her, the, it, it means uh, that's rich. The spirit of the Lord was with him. All right. The, where the spirit of the Lord is... There is liberty. So I want you to take really, really good notes. I trust me, we're going somewhere. So her, one thing he is, is liberty, which means the hand of God is on him. All right? It symbolizes whiteness, symbolizes transparency, sincerity, whole, safe place. So what do I see? And I need you to catch this right here. In this season of your life, you have to stop leaning on shaky people. That's rich right there. In this season of your life, just because they're close does not mean they can handle the inner recesses of who you are and what you're going through. Why is that important, PMJ? Because I really want to father all of you who are watching me right now and the importance of your pastor and who you entrust and who you choose to trust because I need three attributes in that person that I see in her. I need to make sure, number three, three things, that God's hand is on their life, they have transparency and sincerity, and they're a safe place. That's critical. I need to make sure God's hand is on their life they are transparent and sincere and they're a safe place. Why, PMJ? Because when you lean on someone who God does not have their hand on, you may just end up in a fight you weren't assigned to be in. Exodus 17 and 8, while the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Now, this is critical. Let's, let's dive into the text. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Why would the Amalekites attack Israel? In this particular scripture, we see no cause for an attack. What do we see? They are at Rephidim, yet the Amalekites began to surprise attack. Why would they attack? No doubt, because they felt threatened. They were a desert people who lived just south of the promised land of Canaan. I want to paint the picture. They're headed, the children of Israel are headed to Canaan. South of the promised land are the Amalekites. They have obviously heard about Israel being free from Egypt and on their march to Canaan, somewhere between two to three million Israelites are walking. To reach Canaan, this large mass of Israelites would have to march either through the land of the Amalekites, or around them. The leaders of the Amalekites had no idea what Israel's intentions would be, to pass by their land in peace 
or to attack them. So consequently, the Amalekites launched a surprise attack against Israel. The attack was sudden and totally unexpected. Now, I read that, and I don't think you caught the totality of what I just said. The children of Israel leave Egypt. Egypt. They get word that they just left Egypt. They come through the Red Sea, and what happens, Pastor Mike, they start getting word that they are progressing closer and closer to them. Now, watch this. They do not have the boldness to confront the leaders and talk. They do not have the boldness to at least just suggest, what are your intentions? Are you coming for us? Do you come in peace or do you come in war? What do they do? I'm going to say this and I'm going to lose half the stream right here. They are so insecure about who they are that they start attacking people who had no intention on attacking them. And I would like to submit to you watching today that the reason so many people have a problem with you who you don't even have a clue about is because they see in you what you don't see in yourself. And I'm going to say this and six of y'all may stand up in your house. They are attacking you not because you said something to them, but you are a threat. How do you know you a threat? Because when they look at you, they see what they could have been had they stayed submitted to God. When they look at you, they cannot figure out how you do what you do. Can I preach the three folk who are watching me right now, who folk know how much money you make, they know what you possess, and still can't figure out how you making all this stuff happen, and the devil is trying to kill you. Why? Because you are a threat. How do I know I'm a threat? Because I'm broke with expensive taste. I'm filled with prophetic gifts, but ain't even start prophesying yet. I'm anointed and don't even bother nobody. And the devil has been looking at me saying, if I don't kill them before they realize who they are, all hell finna break loose. Three of y'all ought to just type, I'm a threat. I'm in the wrong church today. Look at somebody and just say, I'm a threat. Five of y'all ought to just type, I'm a threat. Tell them, if you knew who what I possessed, if you knew who I really was, whenever the devil can't handle who you are about to come, he attacks where you are because he realized I can't beat you in your future. But if I can take you out of your present, you won't become what God called you. Somebody shout, I'm a threat. I'm in the wrong stream today. Somebody just type, I'm a threat. Tell him if you knew who you was on this stream with, if you knew who you were standing around, look at your neighbor, look at everybody in your house, look at everybody on your timeline and tell them, be careful when you stand next to me because people will try to kill you for hanging with me. It costs something to stand next to me. Ain't nothing weak or soft about me. I'm extraordinarily gifted. I'm called. I'm anointed. I am a... Somebody say threat. I feel something, Rod. Say threat. I see two times when I see threats. Moses, this is critical, they, they put an edict out, I want you to kill all these sons. His mama puts him in a basket, puts him in the water. I, wanna, I want you to catch this. Why would they try to kill Moses as a baby? I pray you can receive this. The baby wasn't a problem. It was when the baby came into maturity that was the problem. I want to preach to five of y'all who are at home frustrated right now. Like, Pastor Mike, why they talking about me? I ain't got nothing yet. Why they mad at me at work? I ain't even got the position yet. Why they hating on me? I ain't even got the thing yet. I want to submit to you that your haters are not pathetic. They're prophetic. Your haters aren't pathetic, they are prophetic. They peeked over into your future and can tell you got something that they cannot compete with. So they try to make you, watch this, insecure. Jesus, his mother is on the run because he's a threat. His, his mother is on the run because he's a threat. I need you to go kill all the sons because one of them, I, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna say this. Ooh, my God, I, I'm gonna say this. And five of y'all gonna have church with me. I, I'm gonna see if you catch this before I even say it. I need you to kill all the sons because one of them gonna become king. Y'all missed it. Y'all slow too. I'm gonna say it again. I need you to kill all these sons being born because one of them not is. Not is the savior. Not is the redeemer. It's going to be. See, the attack on who you are now has nothing to do with who you are now. It's who God is preparing you to become. 
And I don't want somebody to just declare, I'm shifting in this season. I'm becoming everything that God has called me to be. The Amalekites were insecure. They had no idea. Had they been nice to them, they probably would have protected them. Had they been nice to them, they probably would have provided for them. Can I submit to you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If God was with the Israelites and I befriend the Israelites, that means God will be with me because of who I'm connected to. And I came to submit to somebody, you better be careful who you put your mouth on. You better be careful who you attack. You better be careful who you don't like. Why PMJ? Because when you got a problem with me, you got to take it up with my God. Look around you and just say, be careful how you treat me. Because if you're good to me, God will favor you. If you're good to me, God will bless you. If you're good to me, God will sustain you. If you're good to me, God will grace you. If you're good to me, God will hold you up. But if you're bad to me, you're going to have to feel the wrath of my God and touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. I come with a message to America. Be careful how you treat us. Be careful how you kill us because God is about to redeem. God is about Somebody say insecure. I feel something. They're insecure because they view them as a threat. Watch Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I want you to catch this. Your view reveals you. Your view reveals you. Okay, here it is. I'm I'm scared to say this. A person who is insecure lacks confidence in his or her own value and one or more of his or her capabilities. They lack trust in him or herself or others or has fears that at a present, watch this, positive state is temporary and will let him or her down and cause him or her loss or distress by going wrong in the future. I want you to catch this. A person who is insecure lacks confidence in his or her own value or capabilities. Watch this. I want you to go to the promised land and scout it out. We can't do that. Because we look like grasshoppers, your view reveals you. We, okay, we can't go over there. Y'all see that? We look like grasshoppers to us. Okay, I, I, I want to I ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Uh, who, who has a dog? A- anybody have a dog? Anybody, you have one. Okay, all right, who, I, I have a dog at home, okay? All right, th- this was crazy. This was crazy, all right? You love your dog? You pet your dog, okay? H- here's what's crazy. My dog will be running with me, okay? Let me see a spider. <sighs> something did something to me just right then. I'm going to take out running, okay? Who's ever seen an ant? Okay, all right, I'm tripping. Yesterday we in the front yard and my dog starts running and I'm like, what's wrong, what's wrong? I look down, it's a grasshopper hopping in the grass. Now keep in mind, my dog, grasshopper, but yet my dog is running from a grasshopper. Growing up, I watched Looney Tunes and Looney Tunes taught me a very powerful pr- principle that we can apply to our life. You would have an elephant and whenever you wanted to scare an elephant, they would bring a what? Mouse. I see this principle that just because you big, Goliath, don't mean you can handle me, David. But how you view you, this is good, reveals you. She, she, She thinks she all that. Your view reveals you. The problem ain't she thinks she all that. The problem is in your statement of saying that you revealed you don't think you enough. Preach, Pastor Mike. He think he a prophet. Now, the problem ain't the fact that he think he's a prophet. How are you mad at him for trying to walk in what God called him? The problem is you don't see yourself as what God called you. And because you don't see yourself right, you try to hold back people who see themselves right. You ain't arrogant, you just confident. But when you get around blind people, they will attack you for being who you are because they can't handle who you are because they like being around people who can't compete with who they are because they surround themselves with weak people to make themselves feel bold and bad when I'm not dummying down who I am so you can be secure in who you are. I am. Mm. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. Hear me when I say this. They attacked them because they felt threatened. 
when I look across America right now and I keep seeing unarmed black men killed, but then the rhetoric that's coming back is I felt threatened. How do you feel threatened when you got the gun? How you feel threatened when you got the badge? But what I really see is that your view of those people don't reveal them. It reveals you that you got more power than them. You got more authority than them, yet you're still intimidated by them because just because you got on man-made authority, it cannot touch God-given authority. I'm preaching to somebody in here. I want to pause. I feel God pulling on me right there because six of y'all been insecure lately because you've been around people who've been bringing up all of your faults and now you've been questioning who you are and trying to change who you are to fit into their box. The devil is a liar. Take me as I am. I dare six people to just put yourself back on. Put your mind back where it is. Put your peace back where it is. Put your swagger back where it is. Put your anointing back where it is put your favor back where it is the pressure ain't gonna break you haters ain't gonna shake you the pandemic ain't gonna stop you racism ain't gonna kill you you gotta say ask for me I am what God says I am watch this Moses commanded Joshua look at this choose some men to go out and fight the army tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. I want you to catch this. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed the mountain. What do we see? Connection and commitment matter. <laughs> Connection and commitment matters. Why, PMJ? Please notice that they're fighting a battle on two fronts. I'm going to have church by myself. Joshua is fighting physically while Aaron and Hur are warring spiritually. Oh my God, Joshua is fighting physically while Aaron and her are warring spiritually. This is critical. This is my message to the church who will sit at home and critique a protest that they won't get involved in. While the protesters are in the mud, we should be on the mountain. I don't think you heard me. While the protesters are in the mud, we should be on the mountain. Why? Because we see a strategy for deliverance. Moses says, here's what we're going to do. Joshua, you take some folk and shut it down. Aaron, her, y'all come with me on the mountain. And in this season of my life, in this season of my life, personally, I need some people in the mud and I need some people in the mountain. And my problem with church and my problem with life right now is that mountain people tend to feel better than mud people. My problem is there are people who want to go to the mountain who look down on folk who go to the mud. There are people who want to sit on their titles and their degrees and their intellectual capabilities and where they live and what they drive and they look down on people who don't mind getting dirty. I want to stop for a minute and submit to somebody watching me today because there are three types of people watching this stream. There are some mud folk who God has anointed you to get down and dirty. There are some mountain folk who understand prayer and strategy. But the third group is my group right there. I'm mud and mountain. I can pray and fight. I can strategize and throw hands. You missed it. I came to submit to you that what God is doing right now, you got to be able to get in the mud or go on the mountain. Now I want you to look at how I said that. I want you to look how I said that. I said Joshua is fighting physically. Aaron and her are warring spiritually. This is critical. Moses, and I want you to put this scripture on the screen for me. Uh, go, to, go to Exodus 17, 9, go to 10, 9, 10. Exodus 17, 9, 10. Watch what he says. Joshua did what Moses had commanded. I want you to catch this. I, I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. This is critical. He tells them what? Meanwhile, Moses, are y'all counting? Aaron, her, climbed the mountain. We know Moses the prophet. We know Aaron is the priest. We know her based off of Genesis, that her comes from the tribe of Judah, which, which is a kingly tribe. So what do we see on the mountain? A prophet, a priest, and a king. You cannot gloss over that, YPMJ, because this is a precursor to what we see on a hill. We see a Jesus who is prophet, priest, king. 
He said, if we're going to be successful in this current fight, three things got to be on one accord. The prophet, the priest, the king. Watch this. I need someone who hears from me. I need somebody who prays for my people. And I need somebody who legislates my land. In this city, the prophet, the priest, and the king have to work together. The one who hears from God, the one who pastors this city, and the one who legislates this city. When the prophet and the priest and the king is in discord, chaos ensues. And whether we like it or not, the king of these yet to be United States has us in a position where chaos is running wild. And because of that, we see Aaron and her warring spiritually. I hold your seatbelt. Spiritual warfare. Somebody say spiritual warfare. It's the Christian concept of fighting against the work of pre-natural evil forces. It is based on the biblical belief in evil spirits or demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. I want you to catch this. We can't just fight racism and think that's physical. Listen to me. Spiritual. I've been praying about this. and I've been praying about it. I've been praying about it. And the Holy Spirit has me up now because whenever I see protests, I just fall to my knees and pray till it's over. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, Michael, while they're in the mud, go to the mountain. Go to the mountain. Go to the mountain. Truth be told that while they're protesting, there should be clergy on the side of the protest praying or in front of them with their hands lifted praying. Why, PMJ? Because it takes fighting on both ends. This is critical. I need you to catch this now. James 4 and 7, submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. 1 John 4 and 4, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lived in the world. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5, King James Version. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Ephesians 6:10 may get you going. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Here it is, and here's what we are failing to do. Put on the whole armor of God. That's critical. That's critical. That's critical. And the majority of problems in our life stem from being connected to disconnected people. What happens to the children of Israel if Moses sent Joshua to fight but he was jealous of Aaron going to the mountain. Tristan, what happens if I say, Joshua, I need you to go fight. And the whole while Joshua walking, Daniel, he's saying, why Aaron can't come? Every time I turn around, they got me fighting something. See, it's hard to lead a people who don't know their assignment. And it's hard to lead a people who want to be something that God has not called them to be. That's critical. And the pressure that many of you are feeling right now is you are trying to convince certain people in your life of something they fail to see. You are trying to drag them to a purpose instead of just saying, God, have your way. I want you to catch this now. Many of you are connected to disconnected people. Kenny, this is crazy, ain't it? I love you, but can you get a prayer through? Wow. Look at John 15 and 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and I in him. He bears much root, and apart from me you can do what? Nothing. Look at Exodus 17 and 10. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army. Watch this. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of the nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hands, the Israelites had the advantage, but whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Let's pause. Because I see, we, we read Bible wrong and we leave out important words. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand. I've heard preachers preach for years as long as he held up his hands. That's inaccurate. It is not a lie, it's just incomplete. Because his hands didn't have power. It was the staff. It was what was in his hands. Watch this. And as long as he held the staff up, they had the advantage. 
But whenever he dropped his hands, his enemies had the advantage. So what happened, Pastor Mike, is right there on your screen, verse 12. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. There is a symbiotic thread between being consistent and committed. Because now if you're committed, I need to see consistency. This is critical. I want to I read something to you, and I pray you can receive this. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek. I want you to catch this. I want, look, look, at, look at 13. What did Joshua do? Overwhelm the What did Joshua do? Y'all missed it. What did Joshua do? What did Joshua do? After the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory. of Amalek under the heaven. This is critical. Moses built an altar and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my what? Banner. He said they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne. So now the Lord will be at war. I I want you to catch this. Who won the battle? God. Who got the credit? Joshua. It says Joshua overwhelmed them. I see a direct correlation. A lot of times the pressure in my life comes when I don't see the results of the fights I'm in. Then, Like, why am I doing this? You feel me, Caleb? Like, what's, what's the point? So if you're this miserable, just leave. Like, like why am I? Why, ooh, I'm going to say something that may get me in trouble. Why am I living right? Like, if I'm going to keep going through and going through, what, what, what's the point? See, somebody on the stream has said that. Like, what, what, what's really the point of living right if all I'm doing is going through? So why am I keeping myself when they ain't keeping themselves, but they getting engaged? <laughs> why am I even going to church if all I'm doing is catching hell? See, pressure comes when I have no tangible fruit of success. If you go, so you want to know why you deal with your job, even though you hate your job? Because every Friday or every pay period, you get some type of result. Spiritually, we never reap in the same season we sow. So it's hard to stay faithful or consistent when I don't know if I'm being effective. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? I, I need you to do me a favor. Can you go to verse? Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can, can, you, can you go back two verses? This is good. I, I feel God in here. Woo, I feel. I need you. To add, no, I, I, go 13. Go 13, please. Uh, go 12. Jesus, if, if I see what I think I saw, Moses' arm, but 11. Please, go 11. Oh, my God. Go 10. Yeah, so Joshua did uh, what Moses had commanded and fought the army. Can you go 9? Please, please. I, 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 need, I need to see this because I see something that I believe we really got to take and make applicable to our life. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men. Oh my God. Oh Lord. Verse nine. He said, I'm I'm commanding you, choose some men uh, and go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. All right. That's it. That's it. Right there. 17.9. That's it. That's it. Look at what it says. It says right, right, right there. Pick some people, go fight. I'm going to go to the top of the hill and hold a rod. I, I want to ask you this question. I want to ask you this question. At what point does Moses tell Joshua, as long as I keep my hands up, you win? Can I free you? If y'all going to be connected and y'all assignments are different, don't glance over at her assignment. Because when you start coveting her assignment, you lose the ability to be effective in yours. I'm talking pressure talk today. That's pressure talk. When you look at somebody and see their Instagram pictures and want their marriage, but you don't know their fight, then being single will never be enough. 
When you see somebody close on a house, you don't know how many months they've been working on their credit. You don't know how many years they've been in bankruptcy. You don't know how long they've been fighting to get their stuff together. You see a picture on Tuesday, now that Wednesday, you want what they got. Don't want my prize if you can't handle my pressure. Joshua had an assignment. Moses had an assignment. Aaron had an assignment. Her had an assignment. And this is critical, and I want you to catch this. He said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne. People keep asking me, Pastor Mike, when are you going to say something about this? When are you going to do this? And the Holy Spirit said to me, Michael, only fight stuff that's an attack against me, not you. I'm in, the, I'm, in the, I'm in the house today. Nessa, we spent too much time fighting personal attacks. Moses didn't win because they didn't like him personally. He won because they came at who he was working for. I'm preaching to somebody. And I want to submit to you today as we prepare to leave that you got to discern what has God placed on you and what have you picked up. All my scholars who are watching today, I'm going to allow you to argue with me. Email me, PMJ at the Rock City. I'm just giving my own personal hermeneutic right here. Had Moses picked a fight with them, I believe he would have lost. But because he was in God's will, they couldn't touch him. Watch this. I want, you, I want to free you. Stop picking fights that you think you can win. Only fight fights that God put you in. Tristan, hands up. Pressure gets rough. It gets rough. It gets rough. Hands up. Paul said, the Bible says, it's, it's a sentence in there. It's a one word that messes me up. It didn't say he got tired. It said he got so tired so exaggerates whatever it's in front of. This food can be good or it can be so good. She can be fine or she can be so fine. That can be nice or it can be so nice. It's going to be big or it can be so big. He says, I'm not just tired, I'm so tired. Which to me, this is my own personal definition, to be so means it's everything I thought it was and more. The weight of this is draining me physically, arms hurt. Physically, I'm tired because the Bible doesn't tell me how long the fault lasts. Emotionally, I'm drained. God, we done crossed the Jordan. I strike the rock. I finally get water. Now these folks trying to kill who? Oh, this is good. This is good. Pharaoh tried to make me a slave. Now, I ain't even did nothing to these people. They want to fight me. If you ain't careful, your assignment will have you insecure about you. What if the Israelites would have, what's wrong with us that don't nobody want to be around us? You were a threat. But as long as he kept his hands up, and I like this because it says, they found a stone, set him down. Watch this. Because we're so busy trying to take a stance when God is worried about our posture. Did you catch that? Just keep your hands up. I don't know what you're going through right now and where you are, but in your home, in your car, at your job, lift your hands. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a message from you. I want you to lift your hands right where you are. And I want to place an anointing on your life that as you lift your hands, the things in your life that is attacking you and the people you love, God's giving you an advantage. Ooh. I want to say God's giving you an advantage. That the pressure won't break you. The storm won't drown you. Come on, just lift your hands right where you are. Come on. I know it's rough. I know we're tired. I know we're emotionally, mentally, 
physically exhausted. You got to keep your hands up. You got to keep your hands up. Listen, I want you to lift your pastor in prayer. This has been one of the most emotionally draining and exhausting weeks of my life. I mean this. I don't think I've probably gotten four hours of sleep in a day, just tossing and turning, worrying, trying to help every organization I can help, trying to give to every organization I can, doing groceries on Saturday and helping this group, trying to give money to get these people out of jail, counseling and praying with city and elected officials. And the pressure gets rough. Can I ask you a question? Where do we go to be weak? <laughs> when you the rock for everybody, people sometimes assume you don't need nobody. And there's somebody watching me right now who this pressure is becoming unbearable. I lift my hands for you. I lift my hands for you. I lift my hands for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we call on you. God, all this playing church got to stop. People are hurting. Dealing with the weight of life. God, some of them are doing it alone. So God, I stretch my hands and ask that you give them strength. God, teach them to surrender. God, teach them to trust in you like never before. God, this... This battle is not just physical, not just emotional, but it's spiritual. God has images of hatred and racism, bigotry, brutality. It's being blasted all over social media and the news. God, psychologically, that's doing something to people that we don't realize. It's conditioning in us for a way of life that you never intended. So God, right now, I ask that you clothe us in peace. I ask God that you equip us for such a time as this. God, if we ever needed you, we need you right now. God, I need you, we need you. We ever needed you, we need you right now. So God, we just surrender. We surrender. Listen to your pastor. The devil wants to trick you into believing that you're alone. That's what he does. He wants you to think that what you're going through, nobody else is going through. You got me? Newborn baby trying to provide for a baby in a pandemic. He'll have you feeling like less than a man. Like, man, I, I'm not gigging like I was. My money ain't coming in. How am I going to take care of Daniel? He'll have you at home insecure because we want to be so much to our wives. We want to be so much. And that pressure, pressure, pressure will make you build a wall and admit yourself into prison. Pre Did you hear what I just said? Pressure will make you build a prison for yourself. I got to be strong. Why? The Bible says where well, you're weak, he is strong. I got to be a man. What does that mean? Society has put these labels on us. I got to be a strong black woman. Yes, but you're human. I got to be a strong man. Yes, but you're human. I'm the pastor, but I'm human. I'm mama, but I'm human. I'm daddy, but I'm human. I'm the husband. I'm human. You know, everybody got to lean on me. I'm human. And today is a cry for help. Watch this. Not horizontally but vertically God I need you to do what only you can do God I pray right now and somebody's going to receive this when I say that, that a weight is being lifted as I speak I speak right now that right now chills are coming down their arms that a shiver just hit their spirit tear 
just rolled down their eyes. Some brother just breathed hard and just said, because God, they've been carrying weight. And I call it off of them right now. I call it off of them right now. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. It won't break them. I come against suicide. I come against suicide. I see that spirit right now. I come against it. I come against it. I lift up that pastor who's on the brink of suicide right now. Devil, you are a liar. I decree and declare, God, you're going to give him a greater reason for living. That he's going to realize the call on his life that this current pain that he's in won't break him and it won't paralyze him. But there will be glory after this. I lift it up right now. Yes, God, I come against suicide. I felt that in my spirit. I come against it right now. I come against it. I come against it. I come against it. I speak life. God, I put scripture on it. With long life, you're going to satisfy. God, that they will speak, think on these things. Whatsoever is lovely. Whatsoever is kind. Whatsoever is pure. Yes, God. We come against it. We stand in the gap with you. And as I speak, if it's rough, I need you to just click that link in the comments, please. You got a reason to live, my brother, my sister. To those of you who are lost, and maybe you just logged on today because I just needed a word. I don't know where I go to church. I just, hear me, God has not brought you this far to leave you. I speak peace. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If I was to draw myself from thee, where else would I go? So God, I surrender. I surrender. Yes, God, I surrender. I love you. I'm praying for you. Pressure is real. Do me a favor. Look at your pastor. Make sure you got a Joshua. Make sure you got an Aaron. Make sure you got a her. Make sure you got somebody who will get in the mud and fight for you. Keep in mind, Joshua is not just fighting with Moses. He's fighting for Moses. That's critical. Aaron and her are holding his arms up. And I want to submit that God's putting the right people in your life. I love you. I'm praying for you, my friend. I'm praying for you, my friend. We have some difficult days ahead. But we trust and depend on God. Father, the answer is yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes to your way. The answer is yes.